we're impacted by contractual situations such as I've got in my club uh, Ikram Rainers uh, who was meant to join us on a pre-contract um, from 1 July. So now he did join me from 1 July. He's on my payroll from 1 July, but he's ineligible to play for me until the start of next season. So there's a very real example for you of an expense that was um, you know, meant to be utilized for the season, but I've got the expense, but I don't have the utility of the asset um, for the season. That's one uh, you know, financial consequence that's heavy. A second uh, consequence is players that have been extended, whose contracts were set to end in June, but now they've been kept on for July and for August and for, um, you know, for some of September. So there's another two and a half months of salaries that were not budgeted for, of players who were meant to be released because the season was meant to be over. Another negative consequence, uh, no um, fans coming into the gates, so no gate money. Another negative consequence, uh, sp uh, sponsors that have been hit hard uh, themselves in terms of cash flow. We've seen uh, many clubs in the PSL had their sponsorships halted or frozen over this time, no income. Uh, nevertheless, the clubs have had to carry on uh, paying salaries, uh, you know, meeting obligations. Uh, so the expenses haven't gone away. So from a financial point of view, it's been very damaging um, and uh, very stressful because you, there's no extra source of money that we can turn to. We only have the fixed part of money that we have and we don't have the capacity right now uh, to get in more money outside of player sales. And I think that's why you, you, you're going to see and you have seen um, that the big three clubs will pick up players uh, because they're you know, loaded to do so. Um, whereas the smaller clubs are going to have to sell players to meet budget. Whereas the bigger clubs have stronger sponsorships, bigger sponsorships, they're able to ride uh, the storm out a little bit easier than the rest of us that have to shed assets now um, just simply to break even. Well, it is what it is. Uh, I mean, we, we obviously, the knock-on effect is going to be on our cash flow moving forward. You know, up to now, the, the impact's been manageable, but the, the knock-on effect hits you down the line. So it means when I get to the transfer window, which would have been July, August, which is now going to be, let's say, September, October. Um, in that transfer window, I'm going to be very limited in the activity that I can do other than sell. So, you know, I may be able to pick up one or two players if I sell, but I certainly will not be able to pick up players if I don't sell. And I'm probably going to have to sell at least one player just to make up for the shortfall of the money that we've lost in the last four months. So the knock-on effect is more about the future than it is this very month, uh, you know, or next month. It's about the next eight, nine months to the end of the financial year where now we've got extra expenses that we've incurred. We've got revenue that we haven't got. Um, and there's no other way to make up for it other than maybe over uh, um, achieving in terms of prize money or... Uh, you know, selling one or two of my better assets, you know, to make up for that shortfall. But that's the reality that clubs are facing at the moment. For us as a football club, the opportunity is um, what we've been strong at for the last two decades is producing young players um, that haven't had names yet, but become household names. And I think, you know, for us, we're going to fall back on that remedy. We're going to fall back on that recipe. We've got a coach that's worked his way through our ranks as an under 13, under 15, under 17, under 19 coach, um, uh, you know, an assistant coach. He knows what it's like to come through um, the stages of progression in our football club. And he has a passion for younger players and, and inside the academy. And, you know, we believe that this is a great opportunity for us and for Caetano you know, to start doing things a little bit differently, being a little bit more ambitious and progressive in terms of promoting younger players. And we will get through this and we will, um, you know, have and continue to have, we hope, 
a pipeline of good young players, uh, you know, coming through. It, for us to lose a player like Dean Furman and not really worry because we've seen the maturation of Tabocha Mokwena or we've seen, you know, that Sipo Mbouli is ready for a breakout season. We've seen the progress that Jamie Webb has made. Um, all young players in their early 20s. So we've got reason to be optimistic about the future. And um, for us as a football club, it also means being patient with Keitana and not burdening him with, with expectation. Um, you know, not this, the story that you guys love um, that you'll be talking to me about in two months' time is what's Keitana's mandate, you know, what's his mandate. Um, so for us, in the context of that mandate, we're very comfortable that, you know, Keitana is on a rebuild. Um, not just because of the uh, pandemic, but, you know, obviously the pandemics accelerated that and the pandemics put us in a situation where we don't have options now. We have to sell one or two big players and we have to promote uh, one or two younger players. And we have to be positive about that. We can't look at that as, as a negative and we can't look at that as, oh, we're going backwards. We have to look forwards and say, you know, where's the next Teka Modisa? Where's the next Tibocha Mokwena? Where's the next Aubrey Modiba that we're going to unleash um, onto the South African football market? Because we're good at doing that. And, 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 you know, hopefully we can carry on doing that. As I see it now, I don't know that it's viable for us to be able to uh, stay in this kind of bubble environment for um, lengthy periods of time. It's not fair on players and their family lives. Um, it's extremely disruptive. It's not ideal at all. And it's an emergency situation so that we could complete um, the season with fair sporting justice and no controversies around who was supposed to go up and down and who was supposed to win the league. There's a, there's a degree of fairness um, that the PSL striven for and I think achieved um, you know, through, through the Board of Governors and the actions that they've taken to, to have integrity around that competition. And, and to have that fair sporting justice. Now, if it requires um, other measures into next season, then we have to take them as an industry because that's our responsibility to society, to ourselves, to our stakeholders, um, you know, to our players, to everybody. We want to be in a situation where we're back in stadiums with fans and, and the social distancing is something that we talk about for many, many years um, as a horrible memory or an experience that we went through that was traumatic for, for the world. We, we want to get back to, to that place if it requires. Um, as I said at the start of this process, whatever it takes, we have to face up to as leadership and make the right decisions at that time. And if it requires at the start of next season, which is more towards um, October, um, that if it requires that we still play under some kind of um, sheltered basis, it may well be that uh, we still play behind closed doors to start next season, but at least on the same home and away basis at our home grounds, um, you know, being sanitized and all the things that may be required. You look at those situations and you say, well, those type of players are not for sale. And we have a few of those in the club at the moment. Certainly the Olympic trio um, that we want to release to global football, a player like Tabocha Mokwena, um, is going to play at the highest level in Europe. It's not a matter of uh, if, it's a matter of when. And um, we've been inspired uh, by Percy Tao, by Bongani Zungu, by Kamakhelo Mokocho, uh, by players like that that have gone to play in Europe at a high level. Um, and we know that Tsubocho will take his place amongst them. So for us to sell him into the local market now, when we can be releasing him into the international market after the Olympics, um, is not something that narrow down eventually what kind of players can you sell. You know, to be, fa to be fair, it's going to come down to Aubrey Modiba. Um, he's the one who's been linked with the most moves uh, in, in all the time. He's the one that Sundowns have been pursuing the most. Um, he's the one uh, that's been with us now uh, for a good period of time since he came from Cape Town City. He's given us good service. He's given us good trophies. And I think on that basis, you know, a player like him would be the most sensible in the sense that already I have on the wing positions, Mahachi and Riziki on the one side and Manziba and Lungu on the other side. So I could potentially 
uh, and I had geared up to sell Aubrey, to be blunt. I mean, I only brought Manziba in um, because I was anticipating that Aubrey was going to be sold the first time around. Uh, so from that perspective, you know, when that deal fell through, I was over-resourced. As you could see, I let go Minyamani and Kalinga. So I was sitting with seven wingers. And I think if I look at my football club, where I'm not strong is in the center of midfield. We don't have enough cover there at the moment for, you know, that for a Dean just to disappear. And if Tebza gets injured or suspended, our next is a youngster, Jesse Don, 20 years old, uh, you know, hardly any experience in the PSL. So, you know, if I look in my squad, there's certain positions where I can't compromise, um, like centre of midfield, like uh, striker, for example. Um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of depth there. Uh, I've brought Ikram Rainers in. Hopefully that will help. But in the wide areas is where we, we well stocked. So, you know, bluntly speaking, Aubrey Modiba would probably be um, the, the, the player that we're looking to, to make a big sale with in the next window. And, um, and then, of course, it comes down to a Bradley Krobler, you know, whether he wants to see it out at the club um, or he wants to have one, um, one stab at, at, at a move, you know, at, at his age right now. He, he probably only has one move left in him. And, um, you know, we would need to sit down with Bradley and see how he feels at the end of the season um, and, and, and where he sees that. Because, as I said to you, we're limited in our wage structure. We, we, we're limited in our financial resource. And um, if there was a very big move on the table for, for Bradley Krobler, which off the back of his 14 goals this season may very well be the case, um, then he's also a player that we would need to you know, consider, you know, his future. He's got a, a, a situation with us where we've offered him something until the end of his football career. And in fact, um, potentially beyond his football career, in fact, certainly I've, I've, I've offered him a potential coaching spot um, at the end of his career. But at the same time, you know, um, money is money now. And if, um, if Bradley gets offered something big, I don't think that anybody at Supersport would be saying to him, we expect you to serve out, you know, the rest of your career here where you can maybe go and earn double um, elsewhere in the, in, in the twilight of your career. So, you know, those are probably the two players that would be linked with a move. Of course, Aubrey, I could get away with, with moving on and not replacing in my current squad. Bradley, I could never get away with not replacing in my current squad. So, you know, if for a Bradley to leave, it wouldn't just be about what offer we got or what offer was on the table for him, but it would also be about finding the right replacement, the most suitable replacement, um, be that in the transfer market, be that as part of a swap deal, um, you know, or be that with the proceeds of what we sell Bradley for. I would certainly need to replace Bradley um, with, a, with a very, very, very good striker. Um, which isn't easy to do. So right now, um, Aubrey's our main uh, kingpin if we're going to sell and um, we'll evaluate Bradley at the end of the season. You know, we want to give him a chance to win this golden boot and, and, and drive up his value in the market. And if that leads to good things for him, well, he jolly well deserves it. Uh, yes, Sundowns have shown interest. They've never stopped showing interest in Aubrey. Uh, I think we at a point with Sundowns where you know they've tabled a very good offer for us, uh, but we've we've taken a view which I think is the right view that given the situation we've got six games left, you know I don't know what my situation is going to be. It could very well be that we finish third and I've got Africa next year. That also has an impact on our decisions, on the depth of the squad, and on, on what we do. Um, so from that perspective, we, we you know we still there's still water to flow under the bridge this year. It's not a case of I'm not in the window now. I'm not in the transfer window now. I've got six games left, and I've I've got to get the best out of my assets.